Home of the Brave by Catherine Applegate. Wet feet. Even the wonder of crazy glue can't turn my aunt's dishes into their old selves. The next morning, I tell my aunt of my great mistake. She makes her lips into a line and then closes her eyes. But she doesn't say a word. I would like it better if she could find her mad voice. Back in Africa, she and my uncle would argue so fiercely that their hut trembled. The cattle are stampeding again, the village would joke. But now I think she is too tired to yell. When Dave comes to visit in the afternoon, I tell him about the broken dishes. He just laughs. That's nothing, he says. I once had a client who tried to wash the clothes, wash his clothes in the toilet. This doesn't sound like such a wrong idea to me, but I decide to hide my thinking. Instead, I say, I must get a job, Dave, like my aunt, so I can buy her new dishes. Hold on, he says. We'll see about that soon enough. You just got here, Keck. You need some time to get your feet wet. I check my shoes. It's true enough that they are dry. That's called an idiom, Dave explains. You're going to run into a lot of those. It means to get experience. Dave turns to Ganwar, who sprawled on the couch like a dozing dog. Actually, I've been meaning to talk to you about a job, buddy. There are some openings at a couple of fast food places on the bus line. Ganwar groans. He doesn't bother to open his eyes. I didn't come to this country to sweep the floors, he mutters. You got to start somewhere, Dave says, and your mom needs some help with the bills. You're the man of the family now. A man does not wear a paper hat and give out ketchup packets, Ganwar replies. Ketchup is a fine food, isn't it, I offer, but Ganwar ignores me. Don't be intimidated, Ganwar, Dave says. They'll teach you the skills you need. I have many skills, Ganwar says, even with one hand. His words spark like lightning. Ganwar is a great herdsman, I say. He was one of the best in our village. We'll talk about this later, Ganwar, Dave says. I follow Dave to the door. I want to ask him something, but I'm afraid he'll say no. I take a big breath. Do you remember the cow we saw the other day? I ask. I would like to go back to visit her again. Gee, I can't today, Keck, Dave says, but maybe next week. He didn't say no, I realize, so I try again, just like I would have with my own father. Sometimes if you ask enough, fathers turn maybe into a yes, but only sometimes. Maybe I could take the bus. My new friend Hannah takes the bus to many places, I say. She could come with me. Dave thinks for a moment. He takes a little piece of paper and a pen out of his pocket, coat pocket and writes down some words. This is where the farm is, but don't try going without a friend to help you, okay? Okay, I say, and I put the paper in my pocket of my jeans. Give her a pat for me, buddy, Dave says as he opens the door. I think he is just being kind since I am certain he is not a great lover of cows. I wave goodbye and smile to, my, smile to myself with the secret comfort of a big idea. Bus. On the day with the name of Saturday, Hannah and I wait by the road for the bus to come. It's even bigger than the school bus with the sour breath and slow growl of a starving animal. The door squeals open and I follow Hannah up the stairs. She pours quarters into the glove, into my glove. Here she says, do like I do. Her money clatters into the box by the driver. But I shake my head, the school bus is free. This one you pay for, she says, come on, hurry up. The driver makes a face that says, stupid new to this country boy. But Hannah, I say, I can't take more money from you. Hannah tips my glove over the box and the quarter slip in with a happy jangle. She grabs my arm as the bus rushes forward. We pile into the seat near the back. See, my mom sends me money sometimes, Hannah says. Her nose and cheeks are red. 
a sunset sky. Just, you know, out of the blue, no explanation, no letter. It just shows up. I used to write to her and say thanks, but now I don't bother. She never writes back. Anyway, my foster mom always hands the money over to me. I give her some and then the rest I put in a box under my bed. But it's yours to spend, I say, not mine. Hey, you get a job, you can pay me back. Meantime, keep your eyes open. I blink, but they are. I mean, look out the window for this farm. I'm not sure if Dave got the right stop or not. I never noticed a farm out this way. It's a very small farm, I admit. After much snow and many buildings, I see the last, I see at last the little farm. The bus pulls over and we step into a pile of snow as high as our knees. There she is, I say. The cow is standing near a shed. She looks bored and cold. I thought she was a girl, Hannah says. She has horns. Girl cattle can have horns, I explain. Really, Hannah asks. Way to go, girl cow. So now what? We take a deep breath of icy air and it's like swallowing an arrow. Now, I say, I get my job. Lou. It's a hard walk to the house where the owner of the cow lives. Much snow makes a home in my boots and we get to the, the door. Anna show, Hannah shows me a button that makes music happen and soon the door opens. The old woman standing there doesn't seem surprised to see us. Well, hello, she says. May I help you kids? I am Keck, I say, from Africa. And this is Hannah. From Minneapolis, Hannah adds. I'm Louise, the woman says, from the wrong side of the tracks. Call me Lou. Weren't you here the other day talking to my cow? I nod. I just wanted to say hello to her. Lou thinks about this for a moment. It's bitter out there. Come on in. We step into safe, warm air and sweet cooking smells. So are you two selling something, Lou asks, raising money for school? I'm here about your cow, I say. I see, Lou nods slowly. I think she is not so happy, I say. I try to say it gently so that my words will not sting like an insect. Lou puts her hand on her hips. She's wearing jeans like mine and a big shirt. Her hair is short and silver, like fresh moon. She has many wrinkles to show her great knowledge of the world. That's interesting, great wrinkles to show knowledge. I wonder when mine will appear. You two better sit, this may take some time. Lou points to the kitchen table. I was unaware that my cow's depressed, although I'm not entirely surprised. She's seen better days. Lou pushes a plate of cookies in front of us. Chocolate pieces tease like jewels in sand. Please, she says. Have some. I don't want to be impolite, so I take five. <laughs> He's big on chocolate, Hannah explains. Lou laughs. Now tell me, Keck, how do you come by your knowledge of cows? Cows and cookies. Of course, I want to answer, but I know it's important to eat all of the cookies first so that Lou won't be offended. Hannah helps. See, Keck, just got here from Africa. He's staying with his aunt and his cousin, and he accidentally put her dishes in the washing machine. And now he needs some money to buy new ones. And since in Africa, his family had lots of cattle, he thought maybe you could use some help. She pauses to take a bite of cookie, and now she can't talk either. Hmm, Lou says. She goes to the cold, tall box to get some milk. I'm a little sad to see that the milk is not the chocolate cow kind. She pours the milk into glasses and washes and watches while we drink. My husband's family came here from Norway, Lou says, and my great great grandfather came to the US on a boat from Ireland. She pours herself a glass of milk, but Africa, wow. How are you handling winter? The cold, 
hurts, I answer. But the snowballs are good. Blue smiles. So tell me why you think my cow is unhappy. It isn't because you don't care well for her, I say quickly. Not as well as I should, Lou says. My husband died last year, and with my achy old bones, I'm having a hard time keeping up. She picks up a cookie, but doesn't eat it. I may have to sell the place soon. I had an offer, a good offer, and I have a lot of hospital bills to pay off. I don't know, we'll see. We're all quiet for a moment. So Lou says at last, what is it you think of my old cow is in need of? She needs to be brushed and fed the finest hay and without other cattle, she's lonely. I answer, she needs someone to talk to her. In my old home, they would laugh at me. But when I would talk to the cattle, they would grow calm and easy to herd. I wait. Maybe my words are broken like my aunt's dishes, chips and shards that will not make a hole. Maybe this Lou will think I am a moron boy. Have another cookie, Keck, says Lou. Ooh, that's the end of that chapter. <laughs>